Okay. To my left, we have Tim and Caitlin, who are pro unregulated reform, un no limitations to any donations. And to my right, we have Sean and Chris, who are pro regulated reform and believe that there should be limitations in place. Today, we are discussing monetary contributions to political campaigns. Should there be any limits on how much people or corporations can contribute? Should the First Amendment protect contrib contributions as a freedom of speech and expression? Some say yes to unlimited contributions as they represent political views, as freedom of expression. Others say no, and that campaign reform is needed to prevent corruption and that regulation is required. How do you interpret the First Amendment in terms of campaign finance reform, Sean? The First Amendment is explicitly to cover the rights of citizens, not corporations or, or other or other entities of, of people, not more than one person, one person at a time. So campaign finance is to determine whether or not it's okay to cover uh, a corporation funding another person or a corporation. And what what's to be determined is that corporations are unrightfully claiming constitutional rights that they don't have. But Unfortunately, the Supreme Court made a decision that needs to be overturned about who and how much can be contributed to each campaign. Um, well, the First Amendment really doesn't say individuals versus groups of people. If we have a large group of people that have the same opinion, not one of them individually has a whole lot of money to contribute, but collectively they do, then who's to say that they can't have their voice because they don't have the ability to donate on a separate basis. Not everyone has, you know, millions of dollars floating around in the bank to donate to a campaign fund. Now, should the First Amendment protect the rights of these corporations and of the people who are making these contributions to the campaigns? Why no, or why not? No, it shouldn't. The Constitution was completely mis misinterpreted the in the first place. The Constitution is there to protect their rights. Our founding fathers didn't have any idea what a corporation was when they founded it. They meant the individual person. The founding Our fathers didn't have a lot of information that we have now. Do you really think that you know. Our founding fathers were incredibly smart men, probably the smartest that this country were, yeah. has ever seen. And you're saying that they couldn't comprehend what a corporation would be? No, I'm not they saying they couldn't comprehend they how much money a corporation could support and, and could contribute to a political campaign. If they wanted to limit campaigns, they would have done so. They specifically gave very little power to the government because they didn't want to have a huge towering government over the people, which is what you're promoting. Well, you're promoting government I'm power promoting, to limit people's I'm voice. I'm promoting. To limit people's voice, to limit their First Amendment right to take, to take part in a political process. You're doing it by putting caps on how much they're allowed to spend, and they're, how much they're allowed to spend is basically how much they're allowed to say. Now, what if we follow up? Do you believe that the corporations have the same rights as individuals? No, no. they don't. They never have, and they never have should have in the first place. The 14th Amendment was completely misconstrued in this, in this topic. There's, there's, there's no question about it. Since corporations obtained personhood, they have been d disrepresented in, on, on every level. There's no way a, a, a corporation, a, a, a thing, if you will, an, an imaginary thing, has feelings and thoughts and rights. It is if it's made up of... An bunch of living entities. I mean, you could say that... But it's not. It's one person speaks for the whole thing or none at all. How exactly. do you know that? It's not necessarily one because person. Because a corporation company, contributes a certain amount of money to a certain political campaign. Where does the money come from? The corporation itself. Do you think the corporation steals that money from its employees, or do you think they get contributions? No, that's illegal. Employees? They're not allowed to do that. Exactly. And it's not just companies who can make contributions. I mean, labor unions, um, people individually. I mean, you're well, talking about they're limiting, labor unions. You're talking not, about limiting campaigns. Labor unions aren't run by a CEO who has lots and lots of money. Well, let's talk about the CEO for a second. What if he is the, you know, the governing body of the whole corporation? Does he single-handedly have the right to, you know? Yes. Yeah. Because he's a person. Because he's a person, not a corporation. A person, a person controls, controls a corporation. But this is one individual person. We're talking about the whole corporation, right? And the corporate personhood, which is so not, which is totally separate from the CEO. So basically, it's like two people. Are we arguing? If you're saying that it's okay or? that a corp that a person makes an unlimited contribution, then you're just you're invalidating your own point. You were saying that there should be campaign limits, and now you're saying there shouldn't as long as it's not a corporation. So you need to make I never point. said anything about limiting anybody. As a matter of fact, corporations should be limited for that matter. The Disclose Act of 2010, should it have been passed or not? Absolutely. 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 People that anonymously contribute to 
campaigns and PACs, political action committees, they should know where the money's coming from. So while it may not be just a corporation that's funding this, they should also know which political campaign and which political entity that is receiving money and from who. Suppose you have those people that are misrepresented in the corporate personhood that decide they don't want to contribute to a particular campaign and they go support, a, you know, donate to a company that might be a rival company, but that's supporting a candidate that they approve of and they say, hey, I support this person, you know, I'd like you to, you know, I'd like to contribute this much money. Do you think they're going to keep their job at the other, at the other company? Uh, they should. It's called freedom of speech, the First Amendment, which a person is entitled to. Do you want to let right. it's, all, it's only just for them right. to be able to do that. So the government can't do anything about it. I'm not talking about the government doing, you know, persecuting them. I'm talking about people, the other people in that company, within that company, We're not the company itself. Regardless of what the what's going to happen to these people, whether or not that's it, you're invading on people's privacy, and you don't have the right to do that. You don't have the right to it's know what I want to do with my money. Or what anybody else wants to do with their money. It's not your business and it's not the government's business. It also allows foreign influence. Do you want a foreign influence to run our political campaigns too? Of course I want foreign influence. Well, well then that's what it is. It depends on where it's coming from. Some of those countries know where it's at. In terms of the actual contributions, can we talk about the differences between hard money and soft money? And, you know, the differences and should either of them be used pills? Look, we've got hard money down to a T, all right? Mm -hmm. FEC did a wonderful job with saying how much a corporation and a person could contribute to a thing. $1,000 and 5000 that was perfect. However, if, again, somehow it got misrepresented when it came down to soft money. Soft money is unlimited, and you can contribute to political uh, party building. So basically, when people want to contribute money, they give soft money to PACs, political action committees, which is soft money, so they can party build, which means they can spend that money that they put into PACs on anything they want at all, ever. That's wrong, because how many times, what happened to hard money? You're just ignoring hard money altogether. Okay, but so, so you're saying that someone shouldn't be able to give money to a man for a political action committee, because that PAC man will then go and give it over to the, the candidate and how is that different than hard money? Because hard money means it's limited, it's regulated, it's regulated. and you have to know who's shouldn't who be regulated, the money. and then you who wouldn't have a problem of soft from. money and how hard much? money. If you weren't invading on people's privacy and invading on their First Amendment rights, then you wouldn't have this problem in the first place at this point. In it's view. not an invasion of First Amendment rights. At it all. is an invasion of First Amendment rights. Fourth Amendment rights if it's an first invasion Amendment. of privacy. I'm talking about First Amendment and invasion of privacy. Freedom, of, freedom of speech freedom says of speech. right to privacy is fourth Freedom of speech Amendment. says that you should be able to say what you want when you want, and you should be able to take part in the political process by if, voicing. If you're trying to you say what you want when you want, wouldn't you want people to know that what you're contributing for? No, you have the right yes to say what you want, no. but you also have the right to keep that information to yourself. So you're saying it's okay for drug lords and people who do like illegal crimes that have millions of dollars? Well, what happens? Absolutely, they're money. American citizens and they have the right. But they are committing no, crimes. No, no, no. Yeah, well then we should probably step up the law enforcement, but that doesn't make them any less citizens. Unless they're not citizens, they should be allowed to contribute. Even and if they're trouble. Again, more, more entities are now able, so they're not citizens, therefore your argument exactly. is invalid. Right. Back to hard money and soft money. Tim, how do you think either or should be regulated or should they be used whatsoever? Well, I think the terms hard money and soft money are kind of thrown around more or less interchangeably. I think what we need to do is just focus on the overall issue, not where the money is coming from or what we're calling it soft money or hard money. Is it really a different different if you're giving it to someone through someone else or if you're just giving it directly to them? So there shouldn't be a regulation on either either one. Exactly. You shouldn't have to go around anybody. Yeah. If you want to be able to express yourself, if you want to be able to donate money, then you should be able to. If you don't want to or you want to keep that pri that private, then that should also be your right. Yeah, as long as there's limits that say how much money you can give to that. Otherwise, it would be unfair for someone to give as much money as they want to right. one campaign. Because it should be, the campaign should be about who's a better politician, not how much money you have. Saying like if some one person has really strong like good political views that like help the country and but doesn't have money, shouldn't they be able to get elected anyway if they're that good of a candidate? Yeah, but in t today's society, money has a lot to do. Money's with. had money. Money talks. Mm -hmm. So would you? Anything. So would you really say that maybe your definition of a better candidate wouldn't be the rest of the people's? Look, all soft money does anyway is honestly soft money funds bashing campaigns. Those campaign ads we all can't stand to watch during the, the election year. That's what soft money funds. Some of them are funny, though. 
it's yes. a loophole to but what, it's, it's hard money. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a loophole to hard money because all you talk about when bashing campaigns is how bad the other opponent is. It's a loophole, is. but there shouldn't, you shouldn't have a loop around anything. Exactly, because it shouldn't be limited. Or what, no, it shouldn't be limited. That's the reason that you have to loop around something. It's because there's a limitation on your speech and there shouldn't be there. A few seconds ago, you said money talks. And that's exactly what it is. Money is speech. Using soft money is a metaphor for for what you can do with money nowadays. And it's it's not fair that people with a lot of money can say whatever they have to say and when they can say it. Because, you know, having a, a media station cover your, or, or host a, a campaign ad costs a lot of money because it takes up their airtime. I'm glad you brought that up because media, you're right, does play a huge role. And the things that Justice Alito has been quoted saying is that if you have basically these media that are allowed to say whatever they want, they're the ones who are controlling the information we get, and you're not allowed to make contributions. Nobody else is allowed to make contributions, or is only allowed to make small contributions based on what the government says that they're allowed to give, or what they're allowed to say, if again, money talks. Then you're digging yourself a hole here. You're giving the media a huge amount of power. These media groups are giving them a huge amount of power over what the people view, what they know. How does that hurt my argument at all? How does it hurt your argument at all? How? <laughs> because you're giving power to a select few groups of people. Because oh. they're the ones with the money. Yeah. Because they're the ones who own the media outlets, not the ones who own them, not the ones with the money. But what it is now is the complete opposite, where you have all the money in the first place. Great. You have all the money, you can say whatever you want on those six media stations that are in the United States and controlled by sorry. Anybody who wants to can. How is that Anybody not You're limiting knowledge to the public. No, we're not. We're yes, expanding knowledge to the public by allowing more people to contribute. Money, spending money is not a form of freedom of speech. Spending money is an individual taking money out of their wallet or a debit card and spending it on something. It is not speech. It you, is speech. You, it is money not speech. Money equals speech. Money does not equal money speech. Use your money to voice your opinion on which politician that Well, and that shouldn't be the case. Money should not determine what, like how much say you have in. You uh, can express yourself. We're not talking yourself. shoulds or shouldn'ts. We're talking about what is and isn't. And money is an expression. Just it's like an expression. Nodding. It's not. It's not an it's actual. It's an expression it's of conventional. It's not. It's not a conventional thought. It has no are you, thought. Are you arguing terminology in terms of? If speech I took out a dollar bill right now. Would George Washington, on the friggin' bill, talk to you? I don't know, can I have dollars? I no, but that. if I give you a dollar because I like what you're playing for music, then I'm giving you that dollar and saying, I like what you're playing. I like Why the guitar you, you are playing, playing therefore I'm going to that. pay you this money because I like it. And that's how I express to you freedom of expression that I like your well, music. Well, that's just, that's business saying, okay, that's I'm going to... business. It's business that's saying, I'm going to... Cons- that's speech and expression. It's business because you're saying, I'm going to continue what I'm doing because someone is paying me to do it. Or, for instance, if I want to use money to put an ad on, say, the television, a to, tell negative you, ad, might I to add. tell you, did I say negative ad? No, I didn't. Well, to that's what soft views. money is used for. To tell you, we're talking about soft money. Now you're just now you're just avoiding the question. Not avoiding and the being question. Disrespectful. How about we move to the limitations? Only. Okay, I'll shut up for a minute. If there were limitations put in place to donations, what kind of limitations would there have to be? A limitation would be how much money a certain or specific corporation. Uh, can contribute to a political campaign, a or yes, a cap, exactly a cap, or a uh, a limit on how much a PAC or a political action committee can spend on party building. So, what would be the pros and cons to in, in initiating these limitations? Uh, there would be no cons. The pros would be that people. The cons would, would be that you're limiting your first amendment. The pros would be that everyone has a fair say. Do that. They do. Yeah. How is fair how say? does putting a cap create a fair say. Now, if your cap is 400... You're assuming that money still says something. We're assuming that... I'm pretty that sure we've established that it has. You're giving the government the only power on board over that. people. You're what giving you the government the power the media to limit it. Money leads to voice. corruption. Wait. All right. To bring our debate to a close, we will end with some uh, finishing statements. Let's start with Chris. In conclusion, I think we should have a limit to how much money people or corporations uh, decide to put money towards campaigns. This is because not everyone is as fortunate as these rich billionaires or rich corporations. So just because you don't have money doesn't mean you you shouldn't have a say in like should doesn't mean you shouldn't have a say in the, the final results of the campaign. And money sh- money shouldn't talk as the as the phrase, as goes. The phrase goes, yeah. Caitlin? 
Um, the First Amendment is a fundamental part of the Constitution. Any limitation on the First Amendment and freedom of speech is unconstitutional. When you limit campaign contributions, you're limiting people's speech, their expression. It's, it's just unconstitutional, it's just wrong. It's unjust and it's un-American. Can't have it. Well, you pull out the, the un-American word. However, I'd like to say it's unconstitutional to limit someone's rights, but it's a difference between limiting someone's rights and regulating what they can and can't do. Uh, corporations need to be regulated, otherwise we're going to have the most corrupt campaign elections yet to come. As a matter of fact, they do now. As a matter of fact, all the kickbacks that presidential candidates and other candidates have to perform after they get money from other uh, various like PACs or corporations, all the kickbacks are slowing down the political process and clogging up how fast Congress can pass and deny bills. Good. All right, well, campaigns cost money. Candidates have to pay for them somehow. If you put a cap on how much private uh, contributions the person can receive, where else are they going to get that money from? I don't want someone else's campaign coming out of my taxes. I'd rather have voluntary contributors give their money as opposed to someone else's without asking. Additionally, caps will increase the voice of the poor. By putting a $2,000 cap on, uh, or you know, a $5,000 cap on spending, it's not going to increase the voice of the people that don't. Who else is going to pay for the campaigns if it's not privately funded? It's going to be the government, it's going to come from taxes, and I don't want that. You're also not increasing the voice of the poor by putting a cap on campaign spending. All you're doing is decreasing the voice of the rich. And you're also assuming corruption before it's even happened. You just assume that pre presidents are going to give out kickbacks. And you're just assuming that there's going to be all this corruption because there has been in the past. You're horribly wrong, and it, it's awful. And well, I we don't even believe I this crap I can't do this anymore. I can't do it.